Lesson 6.6 .6 is phase shifts. Phase shifts are what we call horizontal shifts on trigonometric functions, and we use the Greek letter phi to represent. So it's just like the transformations we've always been talking about. If we subtract something from x, we're going to shift it right that amount. And if we add something to x, we're going to shift it left that amount. So if we build on what we talked about in 6.4, we have a general form of y equals a sine omega times the quantity x minus phi plus b, or a y equals a cosine omega times the quantity x minus phi plus b, where just like we talked about before, the absolute value of a is your amplitude, the period is 2 pi divided by omega, and now our phase shift is going to be phi either right or left, and then you have your vertical shift b up or down. So given the function y equals 3 sine 2x minus pi minus 1, we want to find the amplitude, the period, the phase shift, the vertical shift, and then graph it. So just like all our other transformations, the very first thing we always want to do is factor out whatever's being multiplied by x. So I factored out the 2, and I'm left with the quantity x minus pi over 2. So then I have a vertical stretch by 3, a horizontal compression by 2, right pi over 2, and down 1. So then if we fill everything in, amplitude is the absolute value of whatever our vertical stretch or compression is. So 3, our period is 2 pi divided by omega, in this case 2, so 2 pi divided by 2 is pi. Our phase shift is our horizontal translation, so it's going pi over 2 to the right, and then our vertical shift is down 1. So I use the table, or you could just piece all the pieces together, make sure you do multiplication first, and then any addition or subtraction. So using the table, I multiplied all my y coordinates by 3, and then subtracted 1 to stretch and then translate down. And then my x coordinates, we always do the opposite, so I divided everything by 2, and then I added pi over 2 to shift it to the right. Sine starts at its equilibrium and starts by increasing since it's a positive sign. So it starts at pi over 2. Its new equilibrium is at y equals negative 1. And then it goes up, middle, down, middle. So here we have the function y equals negative 2 cosine 4x plus 3 pi plus 1. So go ahead and pause the video and try this one. So the first thing that we have to do is factor out the 4 in front of the x. So you end up with y equals negative 2 cosine 4 times the quantity x plus 3 pi over 4 plus 1. So we have a reflection across the x-axis, a vertical stretch by 2, a horizontal compression by 4, shifting left pi, 3 pi over 4, and up 1. So the amplitude is the absolute value of our vertical stretch or compression, so 2. Our period is 2 pi over omega, where omega is 4, so you end up with pi over 2. Our phase shift is 3 pi over 4 to the left, and we're going up 1. So I use the table to do my transformations, otherwise you just do them piece by piece, multiplication and division first before you do any addition or subtraction. Um, cosine has been reflected across the x-axis, so it's going to start at its minimum, up to equilibrium, maximum, middle, and then low. So we can also go the other direction. If we have all the pieces of information, we can write a function that has that information. So for this first one, we want to write a sine function that has an amplitude of 2, a phase shift of right 1 half, a period of pi, and a vertical shift of up 3. So I know the basic function is y equals a sine omega x minus phi plus b. And they give us the absolute value of a, they gave us phi, they give us what the period is, so 2 pi over omega, and they gave us what our vertical shift is. Since we know that our period is pi, we know that's equal to 2 pi over omega, so therefore omega would have to equal 2. So if you fill everything in, you end up with y equals 2 sine 2 times the quantity x minus 1 half plus 3. Or if you distribute the 2 in, it becomes a 2x minus 1 inside. So for this next one, we want to write the equation of a cosine function that has an amplitude of 3, a phase shift to the left 2, a period of pi over 2, and a vertical shift of down 1. So try that. So then the amplitude would be 3, so that would be your vertical stretch. Your phase shift is left 2, so you're going to have a plus 2. If your period's pi over 2, that's 2 pi over omega, which means omega is going to be 4. And then you're going to subtract 1 from the end. So you end up with y equals 3 cosine 4 times the quantity x plus 2 minus 1, or 3 cosine 4x plus 8 minus 1. Lastly, we can use this information to help us model real-world situations with sinusoidal functions. Um, basing mostly off of what our maximum and minimum values are. So we can find the amplitude because it's half the distance between the maximum and the minimum. We can find the entire distance by subtracting the maximum and minimum and dividing that by 2. The vertical shift is the equilibrium value, which means it's the average of the maximum and minimum, so we can add them up and divide them by 2.
So for example, according to the Old Farmer's Almanac, the number of hours of sunlight in Boston on the day of the summer solstice, which is the longest day of the year, is 15.28, and the number of hours on the sunlight on the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year, is 9.08. The summer solstice is on June 21st, which is the 172nd day of the year, and the winter solstice is on December 21st, which is the 355th day of the year. So using that, I found the amplitude, the vertical shift, and then also I found the period. So the amplitude, I subtracted 15.28 minus 9.08 and divided by 2 and got 3.1. For the vertical shift, I added 15.28 and 9.08 and divided by 2 and got 12.18. And the period, we're talking about an entire year that hours of sunlight repeat. So our period would be 365, which means omega would be 2 pi divided by 365. So then the only piece of information that we haven't found yet is phi. And there's a few ways to do it. The way that I like to do it is I like to use one of our two data points and plug it in and use that to help us find what phi is. I like to use the maximum. So I'm going to plug in x to be 172 and y to be 15.28 and solve for phi. So because I'm using one of these specific points that we used before, when I subtract 12.18, I end up with 3.1, and so when I divide by 3.1, I get 1, which is what it should be if we think back to what the maximum of a sine, value, sine function is before we stretch and translate it, and so we know that our maximum of sine should be 1. So that's why it undoes that back to 1. So now we kind of have to think, okay, if I'm taking the sine of something, some angle, and I get 1, what should that angle be? Well, for an untransformed sine function, the maximum occurs at pi over 2. So this thing inside should be equal to pi over 2. So I can use that to help me find phi. So I know that if I take the sine of some angle and get 1, that angle should have been pi over 2. So I can set the whole inside of sine equal to pi over 2, and now I can solve for phi. So then I multiplied both sides by the reciprocal of 2 pi over 365, and I end up with 91.25 is equal to 172 minus phi, and so therefore phi is equal to 80.75. And it kind of makes sense that it's off by a little bit because that's why we have a leap year, is our years are actually 365.25 days. So now we have all of our pieces of information and we can write our model. So our function that models the hours of sunlight in Boston over an entire year would be y equals 3.1 sine 2 pi over 365 times x minus 80.75 plus 12.18. And so now we can use that function to predict the number of hours of sunlight in Boston on April 1st, which is the 91st day of the year. So if we plug in 91 for x, we end up that on April 1st there should be about 12.724 hours of sunlight. So this has been phase shifts and working on horizontal shifts for sinusoidal functions as well as using sinusoidal functions to model real world behavior.